the perfect recipe for a guitar for me is taking Van Halen 1 with basically any ACDC record and then sort of taking some I guess you would say a bit modern but martially tone of like Steve Stevens yeah blending them all together and then writing a really good song around it So how's it going? It's going great. Thank yeah, you very back, much. Back to Nam again. It's first time in a few years that I've been back here, but it's always the same craziness, it seems, yeah. you know? But yeah. this time, this time it's a little bit different because I, I'm not living in Los Angeles, so it's more of a vacation for me. Right. Not just work. Uh, yeah, but it's back to like human scale, you know, meeting back in person and oh, stuff. Oh, you're saying nice. after the dark times, because we've all survived the dark times, yes. It, it, it does feel like this big community vibe again, but that's the way it always feels in rock and roll. Uh, what are you up to with the guys from Hughes and Ketner then? We are actually playing a lot of, uh, or planning a lot of new things with Hughes and Kettner. Some new amps coming out, tube driven but all the programmability and effects that are inside the amp so it's your one-stop shop for like a programmable tube amp which is very cool nice and so how are you implicated in, uh, in that process then um, I'm basically listening to them when the designer is done with it, sort of the you know hey look check this sound out see if you like this and, and I'm an old Marshall that really cool Eddie Van Halen sound, like all our favorite bands from the 80s, that's the tone I was going for, and um, the, now the fact that we have the effects built in, so I don't have to carry a bunch of pedals with my amp, and, it, and the amp has actually gotten a little bit smaller, so it's easier to carry, travel with, that's to me is the perfect setup, and it's still all two. So what, what kind of tone are you, because we're all searching for a certain growl. <laughs> And uh, um, obviously it's in the fingers, but uh, what would your recipe be if you had to compare it to cuisine? The perfect recipe for a guitar for me is taking Van Halen 1 with basically any ACDC record and then sort of taking some, I guess you would say a bit modern but martially tone of like Steve Stevens, yeah. blending them all together and then writing a really good song around it. At the end of the day, it's about the song. And so, uh, are you writing songs at the moment? What do you do? What are you up to music-wise? Well, we just put out a studio Alice Cooper record yep. that the touring band was able to play on. That was it's called Road, and we're all proud of that. And I'm also putting out my own new music this year. Cool. The, you know, the, the, the whole landscape of releasing records and the whole mentality of releasing records and music has changed a little bit. Yeah. So with Alice Cooper, we did it old school. We made an album. Analog tape? Put it all, all on analog tape, but we but we actually did it all in one room with the whole band recording oh, live. live. That's cool. You know, sort of an old school approach. And we released the entire album at once. Whereas for me, with my own solo stuff, it's I'm taking the mentality of getting enough songs together, release them as we record them, and then at the end of the oh, at the end of the uh, what, you mean track year, by track, huh? You mean track, track by track, and then when you have enough album songs for an album, yeah. then you release it as an album. It's kind of really old school approach in the way that the Beatles used to do that, yeah. release single after single after single until they had enough for an album. It's kind of that way, but. That's um, yeah, it's kind of like going full circle in a way. Yeah, and it avoids the hassle of, you know... Well, it's, it, it, it's it just basically makes every a single a, a, a special moment because we're, we kind of treat our songs like babies. We kind of yeah. treat our songs like everyone... Every song's a number one hit, you know? And, and so we, what frequency do you release those then? Every couple months is the idea to okay. do that. You know? Or in this landscape, in this world, the type of songs that I like to... to the type of songs I like to write, hopefully, are completely out of, they're not what you'd listen to in 2024 because they're the same types of 
hooky kind of stuff that I've been listening to from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So, so in you're going that back respect, to that, you mean? In that respect, yeah. I'm just waiting for the evolution of music, musical trends, to repeat itself, and then hopefully my songs end up timeless in one way or another. So the way you've evolved then is kind of like in a circle <laughs> back to the roots. The way, the, way I, I, the way I try to think of things is just you do what makes you happy and whether it's trendy or not, it'll eventually come back your way. And there will always be a certain faction of people that enjoy the type of stuff that you're doing if you're doing it from the heart. Okay. And so uh, what gear are you using for, for that kind of process? I'm using Kempner amps. Yeah. I'm using Rock and Roll Relics guitars. Um, that's a, 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 a friend of mine from the old school, uh, Billy Rowe. His company makes really great guitars. Uh, I, I play a thing called the Roxy Revenge. Uh, and it's a really cool shape, really cool guitar, really good sound. And I can't ever get away from my classical favorite Gibsons, Les Pauls, yeah. 335s. You know, and on tour I get to play all of them. I get to like even throw some strats and Rickenbackers in there as well. Wicked. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Really all right. Meeting you. Have a good one. Enjoy the ride. You too, man. See ya.